the very first day. The very first day of August 2022. Welcome everybody. Hope everybody's doing well on this autumn day, is it? Autumn is autumn. August is autumn day. Don't worry, summer's a long way to go yet. We got a heat wave worldwide. The oceans are boiling off California. I've never seen it before in the history of humans. I'm Dana Durnford. We got a rock and sock'em show in the nuclear industry again. Switzerland has removed all restrictions. Well, it will on the 16th. Of course, um, Switzerland's media is not reporting it. Japan's media is out gloating about it. And you can call in at 709-589-4406. Is Switzerland making a lethal mistake by removing the Fukushima radioactive food ban? And we got an astounding 100% votes. Don't forget to consider liking, subscribing, notifying, all that fun stuff. The industry is at your door. It's, it's disguised as something that can't hurt you. But let me tell you something. That is the furthest thing from the truth. The truth is coming at you. Is Rolls Royce share price about to go nuclear? <laughs> uh, Rolls Royce small modular reactors are not small, they're not modular, but that's what they're calling them. They're as big as some of the lower capacity reactors we currently have, around 700 megawatts. They're almost as big as India's homegrown reactor they turned on yesterday, actually, which is 700 megawatts. Three quarter, almost three quarters of a gigawatt. Um, hi, everybody. Let's keep her rolling here. Let me see. Rolls Royce, small modules, United Kingdom. They're the military industrial complex, by the way. Uh, third American nuclear sub visits Scotland in two weeks. Well, the problem with the nuclear subs is you can't use them. And so why put nuclear weapons on it? Just pretend you got nuclear weapons on it. You don't need to put nuclear weapons on it. And you don't need a nuclear reactor to run it. All the emissions go directly into the ocean. This happened around the last time last year, same time last year, too, with the arrival of an unknown, unknown Virginia class submarine. Yeah, because they're not very stealthy, if you know who they are. U.S. Navy said this port visit the fast lane, which is a disgusting nuclear wasteland, with a bunch of uh, reactors. I think there's 19 submarine, nuclear submarines, they're abandoned. Commitment to our allies and partners. Yeah, did you know they got over 900 bases worldwide? They need a trillion dollars a year just to fund that. Training operations, other military cooperation. Military cooperation. Well, the, the military's objective is to create millions of homeless and destitute, millions of refugees, millions dead, millions missing, millions unaccounted for, millions of orphans. That's a good old time for your military. They're the enemy of the future. You can't have a future in a military. Blasting highways and mutating food. The good old Adams for Peace campaign, U.S. government. That's correct, too. It wasn't a consensus, there was no referendums. This was a, um, a forced ideology. Again, we're seeing the inter artificial intelligence picture starting to show up constantly. Not constantly, I guess, but every single day. 
we're getting a, at least a few of them in the major stories. They all got that same look to them, don't they? The 1950s U.S. campaign known as Adams for Peace was the complete opposite, aimed to promote the use of nuclear weapons for peaceful purposes. There is no way you can use a nuclear weapon for a peaceful purpose, and they knew that. They were well aware of that. One of these plans involved using 520 nuclear bombs to create a second Suez Canal in the Israel's Negev uh, Desert. Five, 520 nuclear bombs. Well, it was right by Israel. They probably should have went and done it. Unfortunately, radioactive fallout travels worldwide. Israel is the fourth biggest weapons misery producer, weapons producer on the planet. I despise societies when they make a living from weapons. Although this plan never came to fruition, it was part of a larger effort in the 30s and 60s, or 50s and 60s, demonstrate that nuclear weapons could have peaceful applications. Um, this was the, just an excuse for them to set off nuclear weapons, not that they needed one. These so-called peaceful nuclear blasts, there's not, the radioactive fallout is radioactive fallout. It doesn't know if it's angry or not. Supports from the White House and ample funding, more than ample funding is more like it, with the hope of integrating atomic explosives into everyday life. But their children's children's children are in power today, by the way. The focus was primarily on using nuclear explosions for efficient excavation and construction projects. <coughs> um, they they were going to do a uh, oil well, but they realized the uh, or gas well, but they realized the gas would detonate too. And um, if you use it for oil, the oil would be radioactive, and the gas, of course. They're also going to use it for a big aquifer in a couple of places, and they were like. Maybe we shouldn't because there could be some radiation left over. No, no, there was lots, lots left over and enough to go around the planet too. Uh, they were going to use it to do harbors, but you figured then you wouldn't be able to stay in the community. They knew all of it, see? But it, it was about them keeping employed and proliferating it, and this was the excuse, right? And, and if you brought it into the concept of everyday uses, you would bring down the price of war for nuclear weapons, rather. With the hope of integrating atomic explosions in everyday life, to focus primarily on using nuclear explosions for efficient excavation and construction. Actual demons, as well as harnessing radiation to enhance food crops. Harnessing anthropogenic man-made radiation, which is a deadly to everything with replicating cells. So it's all flora, all fauna. However, little attention was paid to the negative little. There's an understatement of the century. The U.S. Atomic Energy Commission was created to explore peaceful uses for nuclear technology. Their, their, their job, is to, which is now taken over by the Department of Energy in the United States, their job is to promote a nuclear. They can't promote it and have a descending of voice at the same time. One proposal was atomic gardening. <coughs> a little tickle in the throat there. One purpose was atomic gardening, where crops were arranged around a source of radioactive material. We call them cities now, to encourage a beneficial mutation like Spider-Man and the Hulk, Dana. Although these gardens didn't produce the expected super crop, they did contribute 
to the development of interesting breeds like the star ruby grapefruit. So remember, if you're going to eat grapefruit, whatever you do, don't buy that piece of shit. U.S. officials also explored the idea of using nuclear energy for transportation, including rocket nuclear power planes and rockets for space travel. When they knew this was a 100% dis disaster, like, no, give us the money, we'll try. These, they were just gross, and there's children, children's children's children are currently in charge. These concepts never materialized due to safety concerns. Not before they wrecked the planet, though, as the risk of nuclear accidents was high. So first off, why even mention it? <clears throat> How did that even come into the conversation? Because when it's so stupid, they just painted it as a possibility, see? A notable, another notable idea was Project A119, which suggested detonating a nuclear bomb on the moon to study crater formations. But the true purpose was to intimidate the Soviet Union, the former Soviet Union, after the Sputnik. Again, this industry, the nuclear industry, do you really think it stopped this madness, what we're talking about right there? You really think the current generation not doing the same thing? <coughs> it's much worse. Overall, the Atoms for Peace campaign was an attempt to promote and justify U.S. nuclear research development through various peaceful applications. However, the efforts have since been seen as propaganda for what they are to mask the country's nuclear proliferation. How the FBI investigated suspected lesbians in nuclear weapons project. Um, Now everybody's being mutated. Atomic bomb creator, so it's come full circle. Atomic bomb creator Robert Oppenheimer continued, and I hated that they're using this actor's name. It's almost like Oppenheimer no longer exists. Everything is about the actor who played his part in a stupid three hour ideology of propaganda. Creator Robert Oppenheimer continue to draw audiences into theater today. Another story about the Bond Project is coming to light. Eight women who worked on it were subject to federal government investigation. They had tens of thousands of spies at that time, folks. They spied on everybody, every single employee that worked there. They hired illiterates from the community that were... Uh, couldn't even read or write, particularly to do like cleaning, so he couldn't read memos or something. Eight women who worked on it were, but he spied on them too. Eight women who worked on it were subject to federal government, and he hired spies to spy on the spies. Eight women who worked on it were subject to federal government investigation because they were believed to be lesbians. And some of them lost their jobs amid the homophobic hysteria of the time. The women have been dubbed the Manhattan Eight by the Seattle Times. Every woman there was spied on, folks, which conducted extensive review of records related to them through the governmentaddict.org website, which is, I'll be hanging out there for a while. Five of them, because if there's government documents on nuclear, I want to see it. Five of them worked at Los Alamos in New Mexico, and three at a site called Hanford, called, notice how they've done it called Hanford, because you probably don't know about it is what they're suggesting. Hanford dumped so much in the 40s and 50s into the soil, it was 450 billion gallons, but that's equal to a six foot wide aquarium, 518 feet tall, wrapped around the entire planet, and a little bit more. <coughs> No, no, Dan, it can all fit in a swimming pool. In 1953, Eisenhower issued an executive order denying security clearances for people who suspected of sexual perversions, which would have included literally every person in the government. 
supposedly because it would make them easy targets for blackmailers who could weed out the government's secrets. Uh, well, the government will just give them a bunch of money and they'll tell it to you. Well, it was in force, queer federal government employees were investigated by the FBI and many of them lost security clearances and jobs what became known as the Lavender Scare. Oppenheimer himself eventually lost his clearance because of previous associations with the Communist Party. Right, so when the nuclear industry took over your governments, your medias and universities in the 40s and 50s, and never let it go since, um, these, these, most of these people were the actual illiterates themselves. And they got all this power, it went immediately to their head, and they were in a position at that time in history to seize that power, and they did. And they kept inbreeding among themselves to the point now where they don't have any attributes of a human left in them, the current generation in charge. How nuclear failure affected generations of families in New Mexico. Because New Mexico was right at ground zero, but they're not entitled to compensation, but people further away are. Because <laughs> that's how they wrote. Because otherwise you got scary statistics. Eh? So the best thing to do is, no, sorry, you don't qualify. But people a thousand miles away qualify, but people at ground zero didn't because that would be statistics. It would show up all these diseases and illnesses and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries. And these people were very impoverished, so it was easy to deny them. I got cancer living downwind of Trinity. One of the things that's worse than a nuclear bomb is a nuclear power plant. Uh, this is a 16-day model of fallout from Fukushima. So think of this as Trinity in one way. But everybody's a downwinder. There is no such thing as a downwinder. Everybody worldwide becomes a downwinder. And people closer to ground zero are getting exceptional doses. and the stories are horrific where people were picking up the fall and rubbing it on their face because they never seen snow in summer before, right? Uh, the cows and their, their uh, wells were completely poisoned. And so the government studied them like cockroaches for the rest of their lives. And you can't study them if you give them medical care because then it's not allowed to run this course. People live downwind from the nuclear production. Everybody's a downwinder, unfortunately. The, and when you see these people, you realize what low character they actually are. So they, they survived on their own livestock that they raised and they, they and the animals drank the well and rainwater. They were never worried, uh, warned about the possible contamination and radioactive fallout. Now, the government couldn't do what it was doing if it started talking about the reality. So it decided to cut everybody's throat, including their own loved ones, so they can just seize a power. And now they're, they have become just a burden to the future of humanity. Rico only applies to folks who live in certain counties. Uh, but ground zero, you're not covered. Uncle Sam nuclear pollution, nuclear polluter. The biggest polluter on the planet is the American nuclear industry. Well, when you, you know, if you look at the Soviet Union and Russia, that was insane. What China done was insane. What India and Pakistan done with their nuclear, they were dumping it directly into the biggest freshwater source the country uses. There's streets and streets and streets lined of deformed children, even today. 
Why would anyone who's concerned with protecting the environment want to put the United States government in charge of that task? That's a great question, isn't it? After all, look at how much damage the U.S. government has done to people and the planet over the decades with its nuclear testing. The entire, so million square kilometers of the Marshall Islands is too radioactive for species and humans. A million square kilometers today. That was a study from 2019. It's clear that the uh, degenerate U.S. government, especially the despicable military establishment, has been totally indifferent to both people and the environment with its decades of nuclear testing. Worldwide, nuclear testing was equal to approximately 36,000 Nagasaki bombs worth of radiation, which was a plutonium bomb. The article shows that when the U.S. officials conducted the Trinity explosion in New Mexico, they didn't care one whit about the damage to the health of the thousands of people who are living nearby. Uh, well, this stuff goes right around the entire planet. And you never see them mention this species when you talk about this, by the way. They only talk about humans. They gave them no significant and meaningful pretest warnings post-test advisories, four or five generations of people were experiencing radiation-related cancers ever since. Well, there's 1,800 diseases, not just cancer. I'm so sick of hearing the word just cancer, so dishonest. And then consider all of the above-ground testing that took place after World War II. Yeah. 36,000 Nagasaki bombs worth when you break it into kilotons. There we know. Not counting the dumping, not counting the emissions from all the fuel pools. Stunning what they got done to us. It's stunning what they got done to the Great Lakes. Like Lake Huron is the third biggest freshwater body on the planet, surrounded by nuclear. Right on the lake, dumping us straight into the lake for 60 years. It's despicable. It's just a despicable industry. It's, a, it's a, just a despicable... The people in it are despicable too. We've had so many dealings, personal dealings and phone calls with these people over the years. They're, they're despicable. They're, re, like, they're actually revolting people. They know exactly what they're doing on top of it. It's just nothing but contempt for everything. How much radiation all the tests released into the atmosphere to later fill on unsuspecting Americans through rainfall or snow or just regular uh, disposition? How many people got cancer, heart problems, liver problems, lung problems, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline, Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, diabetes, Down syndrome, schizophrenia. There's 1,800 diseases and illnesses, not immune deficiencies and injuries that you, you need to get into the lexicon of nuclear contamination. It's total denial not to include all the basics. Moreover, think about all the people who were peacefully living on the islands in the Pacific when the U.S. government exported above-ground nuclear testing to their part of the world. Uh, they were forcibly removed from their homes so the government could destroy the islands. In fact, they evaporated, atomized and aerosol and ionized and radiated some of the islands with nuclear bombs. Like the Castle Bravo bomb itself was equal to a thousand Nagasaki's going off at the same time. A thousand. That's a thousand nuclear bombs going off at one time. It's so evil, it's hard to wrap your mind around that it really happened. The significance of the radiation. <coughs> hasn't escaped me, I assure you. Nuclear is really good at being evil. That's the one thing we know for sure. 
This was the martial oil. The whole picture of fallout contamination becomes of increasing importance with high yield weapons. In one program, drone ships were sent into fallout areas to evaluate the worth of a washdown system for ship decontamination. We found we could measure fallout even in large ocean areas by making aerial surveys using extremely sensitive radiation detection equipment and with surface craft such as tugs and destroyers. As a result of these measurements, we were able to document for the first time fallout data from high yield detonations. It is now known that fallout from the larger castle shots blanketed areas of more than 5,000 square miles with radioactive material that would have been lethal to unprotected personnel. This one result gives a new insight into a method for using high yield weapons in both strategic and tactical situations. Sadistic little demon. I'll get there, hang on. So 5,000 square miles with lethal doses. 5,000 square miles. Like, they didn't, they weren't able to comprehend that uh, is what they're claiming up at that point. Then they realized how terrible it actually really was. And this stuff doesn't turn to fury dust ever. It never goes away. And the emissions are pulsing energy at the speed of light every second, the atoms. So like, it's hard to comprehend why that's so bad. Well, it, everything that it, it bangs into like cells and chromosomes and DNA and insects and birds and mammals and animals and everything else are being wrecked by this energy that, that you can't perceive. It's shooting through your body and your body has to repair everything. And if you do, if you got enough of it, you start sterilizing all the species which is what we're now seeing after 80 years of unmitigated emissions into the biosphere. Given that the US government is the world's supreme nuclear polluter, it clearly lacks standings to be designated the protector of the environment. Leave the world's biggest nuclear polluter out of the process. Well, I, I, that's common sense, isn't it? If you're gonna be honest, then it's common sense. But uh, honesty is long gone. There is long gone. And nothing says that any clearer than what happened after Fukushima. After Fukushima, the crazy media worldwide pretended that they were in Reactor 4. Why do you think they done that? They were bored. And nothing better to do, nobody better to demonize. No, because it's an extinction event. You don't have the world media pretending they're in a building that don't exist because you're bored. It has to be something extraordinary for the world media to work together with the universities, all worldwide, and every key government organization. And the official story today is only 2.2 grams. And that's just tritium, of course. Not, you know, real stuff don't exist anymore. I mean, 2.2 grams of tritium is all that got out of that stump, if that's what you want. You can't really call it a stump. There's nothing functional left or whatsoever. We got a poll. Disgusting, stupid, idiotic moron Switzerland. Morons. Morons. Is Switzerland making a lethal mistake by removing the Fukushima radioactive food ban? It's worse than a lethal mistake. So why didn't they have a referendum? Which is probably gonna be the poll tomorrow night. Should Switzerland have a referendum on removing the food? Like really, this is absurd. The Switzerland media is not even reporting on it. And on the 16th, in 15 days, they're going to, I think it's the 16th, they're going to remove all the restrictions. Disgusting. It's disgusting. It's despicable. It's fucking evil, man, to do it. 
Here's how hot and extreme the summer has been, and it's only halfway over. Yeah, but uh, it, summer goes all the way up almost to December now for most people in, in the colder regions where normally autumn meant autumn. The record-breaking heat and weather extremes are unprecedented. No, well, yeah, pre-Fukushima they're unprecedented. Post-Fukushima, this is the new norm. There's no relief in sight and expect a hotter than normal August, September, and October. We are seeing unprecedented changes all over the world. The Atlantic is the hottest ocean. Atlantic's supposed to be the coldest ocean, folks. It's now the hottest uh, it's ever been in history. It's like, and we've seen it when we were out on the boat with the, with the thermometer. We got a thermometer on the sonar, right? So it's underwater, and that's the temperature. Like it's, and it's fluctuating like 10 degrees, for goodness sakes. We're seeing unprecedented changes all over the world. Our Florida um, is boiling over 100 degrees. And it's been that, that way for at least a week. I know uh, James Lucent mentioned it last week, right? It's all over the media in the last three or four days. You turn over a hundred degrees. The the fish can't live in that. The the kelp can't live in that. The algae can't live in that. The, the eggs can't survive that. The larvae, the small fry can't survive that environment. Thanks, thanks, nuclear. You disgusting idiot. The heat waves that we're seeing in the United States and Europe and China are demolishing records. Historical records, just burning them to the ground figuratively. Spain reported nearly 1,000 excess deaths from the heat by mid-July. As of late July, 600 wire fire, uh, wildfires were out of control in Canada. A record, almost 50,000 square miles, 123,000 square kilometers burned. And that's the size of North Korea, which just celebrated 70 years as a prisoner of the United Nations. What are temperatures do you go? In Florida, Keys off the Everglades hit the highs of 90s. It's uh, with Manatee Bay breaking 100 degrees twice, what could be unofficial world record for ocean surface water temperatures. It was, it's actually, I've seen the reports, it was 110 degrees. And, like, it's not just Manatee Bay. North Atlantic has hot spots that alarm the scientists. Al scientists, piece of shit. Literally, the worst thing, the worst insult right now is to call somebody a scientist. The world's oceans as a whole were the hottest ever in June and got even hotter in July. Ocean temperatures take a long time to warm up and cool down. Here in Atlantic, he said, in less than a week, we broke wreck. Like, I dove this ocean as a commercial diver, for God's sakes. The ocean never changes. It doesn't just heat up. Uh, so it'll take a long time to warm up, and it'll take a lot longer to cool down. They ain't going to be cooling down said a professor, the minute it comes from a professor, it's like, yeah, well, I don't believe you. Why should I believe you? You're a professor, for God's sakes. Your job is to stab everybody in the back. So it doesn't look good for the rest of summer, said scumbag professor. Above normal temperatures for the next three months, if you're lucky, that's all that lasts. And the peak of hurricane, watch when hurricanes come in and strike these temperatures. Imagine a hurricane coming along the Florida coast, going over 100 plus degree temperatures seawater. <laughs> Do I hear 250 mile per hour, 250 mile, mile per hour, 250, 300 mile per hour winds, sold to the 300 mile per hour wind hurricane heading to Florida this summer. Pennsylvania climate scientist, piece of shit, 
How on God's earth are we still burning fossil fuel after witnessing all of this? Well, piece of shit, scumbag climate scientists. This happened post Fukushima in less than 11 years. And you're not going to put that in the into the equation, you scumbag. You scumbag. The one mile rule, Texas unwritten and arbitrary policy protects the big polluters from citizen complaints. If you don't live within one mile of a disease factory, then you get, you shut your mouth. You're a piece of shit, get lost. And that's how they've, they've been using that to protect the, big, the biggest polluters on the planet. It's disgusting, isn't it? They routinely deny hearing requests from members of the public unless they own property within one mile of a facility. And then the executive director who reviews the request and recommends whether or not the agency's three commissioners all appointed by the Republican governor of Texas should grant them. So they got levels before you can even get near the actual committee. You can't, you can't actually approach the committee. You got to go through some scumbag who's going to cut your throat and your children's throat and the future of humanity's throat. None of the requesters reside within one mile of the plant's mission point, so shut your mouth. Get lost, you little piece of shit. Switzerland to lift Fukushima disaster import curbs on uh, Japanese food. And stupid, never takes a day off, I notice, is stupid making a lethal mistake by removing the Fukushima radioactive food ban. Well, of course, stupid is making a mistake by removing the radioactive food ban, Dana. That's what they're good at. So, like, it's hard to probably for the average person to comprehend the madness of what we're talking about. So let me let me try to articulate it, considering how mad the whole story actually is. I got a pretty simple way of articulating this and getting better at it all these years. Here we go. And a one. And a two. I screwed that up. Bear with me. Okay, here we go. So the reason the food was banned is because there's four reactors and at the top of each building was two fuel poles, one up there, one over there. And this reactor core, because the way the picture's done, is actually level with the pools because it has to stay underwater to transfer the fuel. It's slightly down, but it's... Okay. Now, they pretend that they're in the building, at the very top of the building, at the very top of the buildings, which are 190 feet buildings. So... They're 150 feet wide, and they're 190 feet tall. And this section, the top right there, is actually this part right here. And that this part right here is taller than the stump of reactor three and four stacked on each other. And the problem was the reactor core and the fuel pools were at the top of the buildings. That's why they're pretending they're in a building that don't exist. But just to make matters even more stupid, the food was banned by 55 countries, including Switzerland, for over a decade. And I, and I marked all the prefectures where the food was banned by 55 countries for over a decade. But when you see the media out there promoting food and they're showing you pictures of farmers harvesting food, they're actually harvesting it, right alongside of one-ton bags of radiation in the middle of a nuclear wasteland, which is forever. This is not a no-go zone. These are nuclear wastelands. They create the word no-go zone because they don't want to use the word nuclear wasteland because that's what evil does. That's what the buildings looked like originally after detonation, reactor four, reactor three, but there was two more, reactor one and two. They blew up and caught fire, caught fire, and blew up and lost their inventories too. But these are really easy to comprehend if you're even a smidgen honest and that reactor three and four, there's nothing left anyway. But if you did stack them on top of each other, they're still not as tall as the bottom piece of the framing for the Kevlar sarcophagus that they put around the 
the twin, which was reactor one, which, by the way, melted down this water, putting a Kevlar sarcophagus around it. And this is why they pretend they're in a building that don't exist. Does that make sense? <laughs> and so then we're back to the pole. Switzerland lifted a Fukushima disaster import curbs on Japan's food. Is Switzerland making a lethal mistake by removing the Fukushima radioactive food ban? Yeah, of course they are. It's a nuclear wasteland. We know it is because they're fake and being in a pool that don't exist and the buildings are actually destroyed or gone. So here's the story. Switzerland lift Fukushima disaster import curbs on Japan's food. On August the 15th, not the 16th. Why did I say the 16th? I don't know. Who knows? I have no idea. But it was in my head. It's in my head. Restrictions that have been imposed on the food products from parts of Japan, uh, parts, which is 14 prefectures. They actually, I think they acknowledged that. Just 14 prefectures. Half the country, because they're the big chunks of land. Not that that mattered. They just shipped it to other prefectures, relabeled it, and shipped it to Switzerland. Switzerland, which follows in the footsteps of the European Union, will remove the remaining controls requiring radiation tests on some agricultural and fishery products from 10 prefectures, including Fukushima, on Thursday. Switzerland is not a EU member, despite the fact that it does whatever EU tells it to do. And the Swiss ambassador to Japan, Andreas Brom, told the Fukushima piece of shit governor, Meiso Yuchibori, about the decision to remove the restrictions when he met at the Swiss embassy in Tokyo on Monday, according to the prefectural government, which is a bunch of lunatics, right? Uh, Yuchibori is uh, just a nightmare. He's disgusting, right from day one, too. With the EU and Switzerland dropping the measures, a number of countries and regions imposing appropriate import restrictions on deadly Japanese food products will only be 10. Asia, China, South Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Macabre, maintains import restrictions on Japan's deadly food. China and Hong Kong, Hong Kong have intensified radiation inspections of seafood imports from the Japs ahead of a planned, a planned release. But they've been releasing it nonstop. Bear with me. The planned, the building doesn't even exist anymore. So how can you plan to release something that's long gone? And then this model is based on 30 days. And this is France's model. I can believe the French, who are you gonna believe? Danny, you don't believe the French. Sure, you got me on that one. But uh, they produced studies. So that, let me go backwards on this for a second. That's 20 days right there of fallout. And there's the rest of them. It never stops though. Like if you kept the model going all the way up to the day, this is what it would look like. France done another study shown a million to 10 million times levels of cesium-137. And this model you're looking at is only based on the 18th, seven days after the tsunami, two days after the last detonation. And that cesium, by the way, immediately damaged the heart muscles, is not slow acting. And your whole continent just got pounded in 20 days with a million to 10 million times like, no dirty bomb in history had, had we conceived that. 
We know what happened because we have the documentation. So saying you got planned releases when it's, and call it treated when it doesn't even exist, is very confusing. A total of 55 economies of place restrictions on the Japs food imports due to fear of radiation contamination after the endless radioactive fallout. United States, Israel, Singapore lifted all of their post-Fukushima import restrictions in Japanese food products in 2021, while Britain and Indonesia lifted their measures in 2022. Actually, Boris Johnson um, in 2020 removed all the restrictions for Fukushima and surrounding prefectures on baby food and cereal. And then in 2022, they removed it for the adult population too. And they poisoned the children right away in 2020. I just, I despise them so much, it's, it's hard to comprehend how much I actually hate the nuclear industry. Japan, China clashes in Vienna over Fukushima water plant. They built all the tanks in 2013. A single reactor normally would fill up all the tanks six times a day. The tanks were built because they had 100 wells drilled around the site where they were taking up samples and testing it for radiation. That's what was supposed to go into the tanks. In 2015, they changed the story at the Paris Accord and claimed the water was going through, right? They were sucking it up. It was going through a filter, and um, which was their alleged Riva. And then was some, half of it was pumped back over the reactor cores that were melting down. The other half went into tanks. Try wrapping your mind around that statement. Now, this was 120 uh, tons a day. 120, uh, a garden hose, like your 3.8 garden hose, just your cheap, dirt cheap garden hose, is 140 ga uh, tons a day through a 3.8. At 30 PSI, will give you 140 tons a day. So Japan... Japan was using one-fourth of a garden hose to cool the reactors down for the last 12 years. That's, that's the official story, see? The remains of the reactors, I apologize for calling them reactors. They're not reactors. Japan and China have clashed over Tokyo. So the idea is to create this narrative of tritium and maybe dumping it instead of the nar appropriate nar narrative of what has happened and continues to happen. So we're in a very most dangerous time to be alive is right now. To release treated water, the most important story in history is this story is nuclear. And for Switzerland to do what they've done, Um, it's really something, you know. Is Switzerland making a lethal mistake by removing the Fukushima radioactive food ban? Duh, Dana. I want to explore that, actually. Let's go back to this for a second. <sighs> Let's talk about that a bit more because that's going to come up again on the 15th, right? So let's talk about it now. I think everybody in Switzerland should take to the streets I think you should burn down every government building in Switzerland if you don't reinstate the restrictions because what's the point of having them? 
I'm not saying go out and do it. I'm just saying they deserve it. And I can quantify it over and over and over for a million years. So let's look at how bad Japan actually is. Oh, Japan. There's enough scumbags to go around that Switzerland doesn't need to make it worse. The hell is this? Oh, um... That was kind of interesting, actually. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta do something. So I can find that again. Here we go. Mentioning Dutch Sync, we played a few videos of them last night. I'll play it again for us in a second, actually. I done a, originally I'd done a couple of uh, videos on Dutch. And behind me, you can see the thumbs up and thumbs down. And this was uh, 2017. And you can see the extraordinary thumbs up and thumbs down of Dutch's videos. Let me play those videos where, and so like you had all, I showed the evidence of Dutch claiming, and he spammed me, he had all kinds of ghost accounts, or did the people that write the script for him had them. Where he claims nothing ever got out of the reactors. He says they faked the reactors. Nothing got out of Fukushima. Um, they faked the, the nuclear meltdowns. Let's play it. I'm not joking. They took the radioactive debris from Fukushima the day after the... Now he's reading a script on his screen that somebody else wrote. Tsunami hit, and they had it all ready to go. The 60 years worth of stored radioactive fuel, they had it all ready to go on pallets. The reactor was already shut down in maintenance mode when the earthquake hit. Then the tsunami came in, and Fukushima sits about 30 to 40 feet up off the ocean, up on a big mound. And so the wave that came in was only 30 to 40 feet high at the most, so it only got a couple feet of water that came in. They faked the damage, took the debris, the 60 years worth of stored radioactive debris, took it quickly, had to have buried it in the ground somewhere nearby, not far away, I mean, in the same region most likely, and buried it in a casket of, buried the waste in the casket of uh, tsunami debris, and then blow up the thing two days later, three days later, 
and sprinkle some radium around so you get a radioactive debris uh, slight detection, um, kind of heavy, making the Geiger counters click around the plant itself. And then everything goes away within a few years. No radiation reaches the shores of the United States. No radiation detected. I drove all the way across the country taking readings. And we're, here we are. I still can take readings. And it's still incredibly low. It's below what we would consider normal range. Normal range being 30 to 40 clicks per minute. So that being said, the fish is fine. And I've already done tests on the fish, too. So the whole Fukushima thing is a scam, guys. They took the debris, buried it in the ground over there, and are collecting money for a, a thing that they blew up. And all they did was blow it up and sprinkle a little radium around the area or whatever, and everybody thinks that it's a nuclear meltdown. Notice all the robots keep dying. Oh, yeah, robot keeps dying. So on here on the card, right off the top, it's absolutely beautiful. Again, we've got almost the same kind of flower, flowers going on here, and, and it says, thank you. Thank you for your kindness. <laughs> There's evil in there people like that creature. This is what I've got on the inside. Look at that. Portlock wild smoked salmon. Now, before anybody says anything about Fukushima, don't even talk to me about Fukushima. Um, I've got the Geiger counters. I could do tests if I really wanted to worry. You don't have to worry because Fukushima was a total scam. Total scam. 100%. The fish are fine. The ocean's fine. It's all scam. And now, he's not reading a script on the screen when he's saying that part. He drove across America, took a massive amount of donations, and... His job was to lead you down uh, the land of complacency. Uh, I immediately got hundreds and hundreds of thumbs down for saying, hey, you know, and I showed the evidence, right? I, I showed the evidence that, like, he's, he's obviously lying. Like, and there's a, anyway. Fukushima kids returned to home school six years after. So they went back to the nuclear wasteland within six, um, six years, some of them. And look at the scumbags out there, got the children, they're used as pawns in such an evil, evil way. Local official can't take it anymore, black dust over 5.5 million beckles a kilogram. And they're going to have spring athletes meets, swimming pool openings, they're going to do what? This is what, uh, 5 million beckles a kilogram, no decontamination. You can't eat the food grown there, but we are forced to live there. Minimasoma. Think about that. You can't eat the food growing in your community, but they won't let you evacuate. They won't, uh, you know, you won't get no, uh, no help from the government if you leave. 10 million beckles a kilogram in Minimasoma soil samples. These are... Like 55, not 55 million, but 55 at a nuclear plant per square meter is an evacuation zone. Possibly 20 million times, uh, 20 million beckwells a kilogram. If your Geiger counter hits 20 million beckwells a kilogram or 20 million beckwells, it says run. Dangers must be analyzed by public institutions. Plutonium detected, it was detected in over 2,200 samples, by the way, in black substances from Minima Soma. A million beckles a kilogram of cesium detected at Fukushima school after being decontaminated. Local officials, I feel as if we're being killed slowly. I want everyone in the world to know that we are living in constant fear. Yeah, indeed you are. Japan's burning Fukushima debris 10 miles from the Diachi plant. Disgusting. Severe internal exposure to radiation. 252,000 beckles a kilogram of cesium detected in a person outside the evacuation zone. Fukushima City Hospital say they can't wait any longer for government. Still only a small number of uh, Minamasoma citizens have been checked for internal exposures. They won't do it anyway. Tokyo man tests positive for 7,000 beckles of radioactive cesium during whole body counter, which is not a very effective way of getting the numbers all that. High internal radiation exposures in 16, 
and young children, 16 people with internal exposures over a milliseaver. But you don't, like if you're counting a milliseaver, if you're reading a milliseaver on your Geiger counter, when you're pointing it at somebody, you should run away from that person. There was numbers that up to one seaver for children in NAMI. One seavered. Fukushima City Hospital says they can't. We've done that one any longer. Done that one, didn't they? Back, I went backwards. 42% of residents' radiation exposures topped the annual limits. Survey excluded people working in places with high radioactivity. So if you worked in a spot where there's high radiation, you weren't allowed to join the survey. Only used four months of data. Study finds 12 millisieverts, 12,000 microsieverts, average thyroid dose, and total radiation in Fukushima. These are catastrophic numbers, by the way. Government assured the levels of such doses were zero, and they won't notify the parents of the results. All 10 children 60 kilometers from Fukushima had highly had radioactive urine, high possibility of children near the city exposed to internal. Well, there's no way not to be, and this was, we come across this a lot, where they would only look at external doses, not internal doses. And they did not have for uh, Nagasaki, Hiroshima, which is anniversaries next week, am I that? 70% of the children tested in Kanto, a region that includes Tokyo, radioactive cesium. I hate to, uh, the radioactive cesium narrative, because like, cause when you, you can find the cesium, say, uh, easy, it's, you know, with the basic equipment, but you can't find all of it with the basic equipment, but you can find a pretty good number, right? But you have to do a mathematical equations, extrapolate the uranium, plutonium, the curium isotopes, which are the most prolific, are the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods, is the curium, and the meltdown, everything's a, they call it a curium because it's producing mostly curium isotopes, like 244, which uh, you need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium. And the studies on the animals, all the animals died, same as the plutonium. We got three tumors in the lung, the kidney, and the bones. 70% of the children tested in Kanto, a region includes Tokyo, have radioactive cesium in the urine. So they have plutonium, americium, neptunium, strontium, et cetera, 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 et cetera. 70% of the children tested are contaminated with radioactive cesium, all of them from outside the Fukushima prefectures. Cesium detected in the urine of Tokyo infants Fukushima infants definitely has no effect on the human body. Uh, the body attacks every atom for the rest of your life with white blood cells and eventually builds a tumor around it. Could take 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, but that's what it's going to do. It's nonstop. It's an immediate effect because you have less white blood cell, a red blood cell. For every white blood cell you're creating, you're displacing a red blood cell. Olympic athletes and tourists warn they will be in danger from Tokyo elevated radiation levels. CCM found at every, almost every venue tested. Uh, again, uh, which is gamma, the, the CCM was used to manipulate everybody for over 80 years. Tokyo, it's really bad, but there's much worse you need to worry about. Tokyo drinking water unsafe for infants, which means the pipes are radioactive of forever. The water filtration system can never be used again, needs to be completely replaced every six or seven days because your aquifers and, and your water reserves you know, are typically at the bottom of mountains. That's where they gather up the water and the radiation is constantly washing down. Reactors, by the way, are still melting down. Homes are significantly contaminated in Tokyo, but Switzerland it's going to remove restrictions on food. And they, apparently in Switzerland, radiation disappears after 12 years. Radioactive dust reported in Tokyo after the fog at over 4,000 becquels a kilogram of cesium. It never disappears. 
Tokyo indoor dust contaminated with cesium at one point one uh, one thousand seven seventeen hundred and brain dead here tonight seventeen hundred becquerels a kilogram. That's what Fukushima followed as a source of human radiation exposure. No shit, Batman. Over 200,000 becquerels a kilogram radioactive cesium and dust from outside the prefecture. Tokyo has the third highest cesium uranium, and then the beta is the third highest beta is the third highest. America got the majority of it, and Canada. Uh, but it still covered the entire planet. Large amounts of radioactive dust fell in Tokyo. Dust. Not radioactive fallout, but radioactive dust. Radioactive fallout, a.k.a. radioactive black dust, striking Toronto or Tokyo metropolitan area. I've been told it's everywhere in the city, said one of the last reporters to ever exist. Fukushima Hospital forced to limit services and reduce numbers of patients due to TEPCO. We don't know how long we'll be able to continue operating under the current circumstances. Five hospitals refuse to provide medical care to children. The doctor said it'll be confusing if our results differ from the Fukushima Medical University, which is no longer a medical university unless uh, humans are lab rats, then it's a medical university, I guess. Hospitals refused to treat Fukushima plant workers, over 5,000 with serious catastrophic internal exposure. Fukushima women are losing their hair resemblance to chemotherapy. No, it's called, it's called um, blood cancer. And just eating a bunch of radioactive food like Switzerland's going to start to do is going to cause massive amounts of that type of illness. But you're talking about 1,800 diseases. Women can't control themselves. At uh, least the stress, their teeth and hair fall out. That's radiation poisoning on a whole different level. I want to stress Japan is on the verge of collapse. If you don't recognize the health risk, then so is Switzerland is on the verge of collapse if you don't recognize the health risk. Radioactive iodine found in 50% of the children will be in 100% of Switzerland. Up to 35 millisieverts, 35,000 microsieverts. This is stunning, isn't it? Believed re reconstruction chief retracts remarks about Fukushima evacuees. Uh, it's our right to consider that I've withdrawn the remarks, he said. Those reject opposition's camp call for him to resign. What was it he said? Um, to take responsibility for their own decisions. So he said the, the people voluntarily evacuated from the areas tainted, tainted by the nuclear disasters take responsibility for their own decisions. Tainted. It was 2017. They gave the impression that the voluntary evacuees could take responsibility themselves, although they were not taking shelter because of the nuclear disaster. Scumbag is the norm when it comes to nuclear. Just 8%, 0.8% uh, of children 2001, Japanese control, control group had thyroid tumors. And the cyst and nose they're talking about are two centimeters. But the thyroid gland is only three centimeters by five centimeters. So that's a tumor, see? Eh? You're talking about 13,646 out of 38,000 which is coming to Switzerland next. They just don't, they, the industry is so evil, it probably thinks it's natural to be this evil. So there's 865,000 extra cancers in 2012. Not everybody got health care. But for children's thyroid... 
but there's clear evidence rates have risen. Before the disaster in 2011, the rate of thyroid cancer was between one and two cases in every million children. It was one or two per million. Now it's uh, 358,000 out of a million when you scale it up. The daughter, the Fukushima mother's daughter had so many thyroids, his doctors can't count them all. People from Tokyo area report thyroid tumors, Japan's doctors laughing at patients. Almost 100,000 Fukushima children with thyroid problems. Whether that's alarmingly high is difficult to say. Uh, Geraldine Thomas was, she was doing the peer review of the studies. Dr. Geraldine Thomas, a professor at Imperial College of London certified demon by the way and her job is the government takes her her statement and rubber stamps whatever it is they want to do by saying she's the authority and she incredible education just to stab you in the back disgusting despicable scum yeah, I can't have a future with scum like this, see? Let me see if I can find that particular clip I'm looking for. It. Probably quicker just to go the other way, but hang on. I want it. She's a real life monster, eh? I got a clip here we can use just in case, but I put one together specifically about her, uh, like. But you can't always get what you want. Unless you're doing it. Here we go, rock and roll, Geraldine Thomas. So, for example, coming here, I would have got a... Now, she's talking about flying to Japan, to Fukushima, to do this lecture. So, for example, coming here, I would have got a dose of 0 0.07 millisieverts on the flight. Uh, and I actually went round Fukushima Daiichi on Wednesday, and the dose that I had going round the site, so very close to where the reactors are, it was 0 0.01 and probably lower, but that's the lowest it could actually read. So I got more of a dose flying here, and we'll get a dose tomorrow when I fly home than I would have done from being in Fukushima. Um, she's claiming she went around reactor three and got less dose than getting on an airplane. It, it takes a real hateful... Now she does the peer review of the thyroid studies on Fukushima children or Japan's children from radioactive fallout. And I got a, I got a lecture of her talking about this. Uh, it's, it's so evil it defies reality, actually. The things she say, it's, it's so evil. If I didn't actually have it on video, I wouldn't believe it. Uh, reports on thyroid cancers, 30% in Fukushima now with tumors of two centimeters or less, and the thyroid gland is only five centimeters by three centimeters total. But then they claim cancer increases after 10 sieverts of radiation. 10 sieverts is a, uh, three sieverts is a lethal dose. 10 sieverts will cook you, and you don't measure this kind of, you don't get, <clears throat> it's not like you're holding radiation and you're getting sieverts, so it's, uh, physical atoms that we're talking about. So Japan okay 10,000 millisieverts, which is 10 sieverts. So unless you got 10 sieverts, you can't have thyroid tumors. The, the, the industry is so evil, does it even know what a human is anymore? 
Now, 1,143 Fukushima children with lumps or thyro under thyroid glands, not 26. Nearly one in every three kids tested. Government decided they are benign. But it turn, turns out that 100,000, it turns out they got so many tumors you can't count them all. It turns out when you scale it up, it was actually 358,000. If you checked a million children, that would be 358,000. 30, 35.8%. Thyroid glands emitting 35 millisieverts, anything under 100 millisieverts, he claims. New, and new scientists, like really, why do they hate us so much, I wonder? Iodine-132 wasn't considered in tests shown high thyroid radiation levels. Well, it, for every 131, there's 10 times more 132. And 30 times more iodine-133. And 31 times more iodine-129. And that the 132 and the 133 are nine times more effective at ionizing the radiating the thyroid glands than the 131 was. And the 131's unbelievably effective. <clears throat> but the other problem was that you're saturating the thyroid gland when you're talking about millisieverts because you're, you're disguising the real number, right? Which works, to, which means you're saturating the thyroid gl gland with atoms and particles from a nuclear meltdown, and therefore all your hormones that it produces are radioactive. <coughs> and it's all downhill from there. For their health, uh, that is, right? Tokyo newborns had safe uh, 1,140 microsiever thyroid doses. I didn't count it the food and water. But see, a decade or two later, this shows up as hideous issues, health issues. Radioactive iodine found in 50% of the children's thyroid. That's coming to uh, Switzerland now, right? Up to 35 millisievers, 35,000 microsievers. Uh, just in March alone, they expected uh, the Iwaki children to be exposed to around 35,000 microsievers. They kept the thyroid survey secret through people like uh, Dr. Geraldine Thomas, genocide, mass murdering monster from the United Kingdom. Radioactive iodine found in 50% of the children, folks. So UK kept the worst case Fukushima scenario secret from the public. Alaska had was exceeding safe levels. There is no safe level, it's man-made. 80% of residents tested with radioactive iodine in the thyroids, 87 millisievers. Again, this is a little tiny thing, the thyroid gland is saturated, so it's whacking out all these radioactive hormones. The list goes on and on and on. 10 or 12 sewage plants tested positive in Tokyo in December for high radiation. Because the iodine-131 has a short half-life, which meant the recriticality was taking place. Children playing on dirt with huge amounts of radioactivity, including alpha. Uh, cesium levels so high prevented identification of other isotopes. That's such an important statement, by the way, because you'll see numbers right from the old days where they said they had this much tritium, this much uh, cesium, this much this, uh, this, plutonium, this much that. But you couldn't read the tritium for starters, when you've got big numbers of the other one. We're talking multi-billions, hundreds of billions of atoms. Rain caused 29 million becquerels a square meter in the soil. 29 million. Twenty-nine million. That's okay. Switzerland's just gonna import the food. Everybody's special in Switzerland. You won't get sick. It's only everybody else can get sick. People in Switzerland can't get sick because the government said so. Press watches the government dumps radioactive waste into Tokyo Bay. 
Iodine-130 levels rise 350 kilometers from Fukushima in 2012, a year later, which meant there was a constant recriticality going on. Massive radioactive waste buildup in Tokyo suburbs. Tokyo to begin burning massive amount of radioactive waste will continue for 2.5 years. It's 2.5 years of dirty bombs. Uh, Machini reporter saying, see mountains of radioactive waste Yokohama. I felt the ominous weight of nuclear crisis, which had seen a distant of fear until then. Mine says crazy, quite like nuclear though, does it? When you start looking at the uh, legacy of nuclear, the future gen the current generation when they grow up are gonna hate our guts if they make it, if they survive what's coming what's been going on for twelve years. They're gonna hate our guts. What they've done to the Japanese children is unconscionable. You know, for that reporter, for that reporter to, to go there, he had to go, come by millions and millions and millions of one-ton bags of radiation. But Switzerland's like, well, we're, we're better than everybody else. We're, we're going to import the food because it can't hurt our citizens. It can only hurt everybody else. It, it can't hurt us. We're, we're special. I mean, you're importing food from a nuclear wasteland, not a no-go zone like they're trying to convince you. This is a nuclear wasteland. What a serious, fatal mistake they're making. The, the list is so long, I'm not going to try to take you through it all. But we got enough there. Like, you, If you were to print out all of these stories in Switzerland and make that publicly available, print out all of this. Let me go right through it for you. I want you to print out it all. If you're in Switzerland, and give it to every doctor, every hospital waiting room. Give it to... Everybody in the healthcare profession, print it out, pass it out on the streets. You got 15 days to stop this madness. Print it out and do something that you'll be proud of for the rest of your life. Print it out and get it into the conversation. Give it to every government official walking into your Congress or Senate or Parliament. Give it to their aides. Give it to everybody so you can have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. Let's stop, let's stop with the nonsense and have a conversation. When do we get to have a conversation? You got 30 million one-ton bags, and you're going to take food from that and feed the most vulnerable of your country. You're insane. Print out all of these. Make a little booklet and get and get a conversation started. You got no media reporting on this whatsoever in Switzerland. The Japanese media is out there gloating. Now, I'm going backwards in case you're wondering when you see the, like, the stories, go to the next one and put it in front of it when you print it. The despicable, disgusting, revolting Geraldine Thomas. Like, really, why are we not having a conversation? Why are we pretending that it's like walking in sunshine and eating a banana? Why, why are we cowards, is the question. Why are nuclear uh, weapons activists not looking at the fuel cycle that makes the weapons? 
can't do two things at one time. And the most dangerous thing is not nuclear weapons, it's radioactive folly from fuel pools and shit like Fukushima, which we've never seen nothing like Fukushima in the history of humans. It's the worst by a billion times. If you print this out and get it on your Facebook pages and and um, you got tons of people out there trying to cut your throat, okay? Unfortunately, you only got one spot is in your mind where the truth now sits if you've just seen all that. Print that out and say they're going to ship food from ground zero and show them the rest of it. Switzerland will follow in the footsteps of the of their idol, the European Union. Swiss ambassador to Japan, Andreas Brom, told Fukushima governor, um, who's going to tell Switzerland? And we're going to tell Switzerland what they're doing? Because they're not reporting on it. Let's go to the next one. So create Japan to hold additional talks over Fukushima plan this week. So they're like they're talking about they're trying to pretend the buildings didn't blow up. They're trying to pretend there's only two point two grams when it was probably around forty million pounds got out. Japan's neighbor ramp up import regulations in response to the tritium. Um, this, so you got South Korea, Taiwan, China, and Japan are working together to promote nuclear. They all want the nuclear renaissance. And they can't have a with a black eye and a fat lip called Fukushima knocking on their door every time they bring up the subject. So they changed the narrative a month ago, and officially now nothing happened, and there's only 2.2 grams, and that's in the 1,000 tanks. Don't worry, we're going to release in increments over the next 30 years. So go back to sleep and shut your mouth. Japan has received a green light to release, which they haven't stopped for 12 years and won't stop for a million. Treated, another insult, release and treated, from the controversial... A positive review by the United Nations was not a regulatory agency. It doesn't have any authority. It can't compel them to do anything. They have no sovereignty over anybody's country, let alone Japan. They're literally useless unless you're using them as a brainwashing tool. Then they're incredibly useful. Under the new president, Jung Sok. Yule, who was a former prosecutor in 2019 before he was elected, was quoted as saying there was no nuclear meltdown, there was no collapse of the reactors, and it blew up in his face, but he got elected, and the next morning went and got his picture taken with all kinds of nuclear employees in front of a nuclear plant and said, we're going to have a nuclear renaissance, which the former administration, they just replaced the day before, had spent four years phasing it out. He came in and decided, no. But, so the next administration might decide to turn it off again. See, you see how stupid nuclear actually is? Under new president, we will maintain his current ban on product imports. To, I mean, there really isn't a product import ban. See if I can find it. Japan has exported a total of 708,000 tons of seafood to South Korea since March 2011. 
So they say they got a ban on it, but they exported 708,000 tons, which is 1.55 billion pounds. They imported 1.5 billion pounds. But they got a ban on the seafood, Dana, for the last 12 years. Uh-huh. Really? Says you. Will I ever find my way back? To where we just left off? Doesn't matter because we'll just move on, right? Oh, that is it there, isn't it? France began evacuating citizens from Niger. Well, France is currently getting... Um, France is currently getting their uranium from a lot of different countries. Before about the first 50 years, they got all of their uranium from Niger. And in order to make that work, they had to create a permanent civil unrest. So they destroyed the government, the infrastructure, and they provided weapons to the opposition in surrounding border countries. And all they had to do... Now, France currently has around 4,000 soldiers with nuclear weapons and everything stationed in Niger, biological, chemical weapons, and they're, they're very active in the country. So there's been a military coup against a former colonizing country, which is France. I was looking for, I got the other story there somewhere, but... That is here. We'll get to it. It's one of the most impoverished countries on the entire planet is Niger. That's where France gets all its uranium, high assay, high grade rather uranium. Switzerland lift Fukushima disaster import curbs on Japanese food. Well we got a poll asking a simple question. Is Switzerland making a lethal mistake by removing Fukushima radioactive food ban? I see Japan's uh, artificial intelligence has uh, isolated me again. Mayomar Janda pardons deposed leader, 78-year-old. She got 33 years in jail, so they're going to give her a break and take six years off her sentence. So 28 on to 78, she'll be 116, is it? Or 106 before she gets out or something. The Korea War never ended. 70, 70th, we're just past the 70th anniversary of United Nations wrecking millions of people's life permanently. In recent weeks, the U.S. has flown nuclear-capable bombers and war planning talks with South Korea. South Korea is disgusting. July 27 marks 70 years since 70 years since the beginning, the signing of the armistice that halted, but did not end the Korean War. There was never, it never even halted it. Since then, the divided peninsula has been locked in a perpetual state of war that grows even more dangerous. Well, you need that for the weapons factory production machines to make money, see? Gotta have a boogeyman to avert nuclear war and protect our environment. America must demand an end to the growing U.S. military presence around the world and reigning in nearly $900 billion military budget. I mean, you got to have a war, otherwise you can't develop new weapons. And then the 10 big weapons producer, won't, the shareholders will just stage a war so you can get into war again. 
right, which is what Patrick Claussen talks about. How did you get into all the wars in history, the big major wars that are relevant to the historic? And Patrick Claussen, where you too, Patrick, you little demon. So I just, I just condensed down his speech. But you know, now I, I put pictures in there to articulate what he's talking about. He's gonna, he's basically gonna say we had a false flag to get into all the previous wars. I got uh, 18 people and I got 44 votes. I got over twice as many votes as I do. I got people watching my show. That's pretty a neat trick, isn't it? I frankly think that crisis initiation is really tough. And it's very hard for me to see how the United States uh, president can get us to war with Iran. Some people might think Mr. Wilson wanted to get us into World War I. You may recall he had to wait for the Lusitania episode. Some people might think that Mr. Johnson wanted to send troops to Vietnam. You may recall he had to wait for the Gulf of Tonkin episode. Uh, we didn't go to war with Spain until the USS, uh, yes. until the Maine exploded. And may I point out that Mr. Lincoln did not feel he could call out the Federal Army until Fort Sumter was attacked, which is why he ordered the commander at Fort Sumter to do exactly that thing which the South Carolinians had said would cause an attack. Uh, some people might think that Mr. Roosevelt wanted to get us into World War II, as David mentioned. You may recall we had to wait for Pearl Harbor. So if, in fact, the Iranians aren't going to compromise, it would be best if somebody else started the war. So he's talking about a false flag. That's what he's talking about. We must finally end the Korean War's right. It's shocking. Seventy, they were occupied by Japan for fifty years, and then Nagasaki, Hiroshima happened, and they left. Then um, the League of Nations changed their names to United Nations and done a police action. They dropped more bombs than they did in World War II on little tiny North Korea. Millions dead, millions missing, millions in refugee camps, millions of orphans, 10 million injured, wound, deadly wounds of civilians. They used napalm to burn down the entire country. I was out doing just because uh, we're not out on the ocean don't mean I'm not busy. Uh, so I got a bunch of pictures that if I don't start showing them now, we might not get them seen because I do a lot of this stuff. So I'm going to show you some pictures from yesterday, day before today, and today. Uh, and just talk you through some of this stuff. So we're seeing an extinction event playing out. Seen an extinction event playing out. Oh. And um, let me talk you through this. So these two I've seen for three days in a row on that rock when the tide comes down. And I do believe that's already turns. In fact, I think it's uh, what they call a blear, B-L-A-I-R-D-S, blears, already turns. There should be hundreds of thousands of them. I thought it was sandpipers until I looked at the pictures because they were, they were at the very end of my zoom. We'll just play around with some of these pictures we'll get through. I don't think I got any clear pictures of them. These were the closest, I think. And this is up in a place known as uh, Spaniards Bay. And there wasn't a single migratory bird we've seen all summer. These are the only, I think these are the only migratory birds we've seen this year. 
And there's, that's the third one we've seen of the Arctic Terns. And I've been waiting for them. They haven't showed up in the last couple of years. So this is, uh, they've been showing up on this rock each day as the tide falls. And they'll hang out there right up until the tide comes back out again. So it could be something traditional where the generations of them have learned to do it. So I went over, you're probably familiar with this island, these pictures. This is, I'm, I'm a very long way away, so my camera is not going to do it justice. This was yesterday, and the day before I had done it, I didn't take the camera with me the day before. I went and scouted it out. And so you can see there is some, the babies, there is some babies there. We'll be back out there. Um, it doesn't look like tomorrow, because it's supposed to show up tomorrow, but the last update from uh, Amazon was 3.30 yesterday morning was in Quebec. And there's no updates today or night, so I don't know how the hell that's going to get here by tomorrow. So I'm a bit frustrated. And I was tempted to weld up the axle I got and put it back on for a couple of days. And I might do that tomorrow. See, that, that part is supposed to be able to move a little tiny bit, and so you got adjustments. You don't damage the whole system when you go over big bumps or something, right? So it's a bit of a risky game when you do that. And the bearings for the universal joint weren't in very good shape, I noticed. They weren't terrible, though, which was surprising. And so uh, I only got a few of these pictures because I didn't think I would be able to get as good a shot as I had right now. I was surprised with how good this... It's not great, but I was surprised with how good this came out. But this is a nesting colony that we've been studying for 15 trips, I think, on the ocean, which will be starting again. Um, and it'll be a, a feverish pitch once we, get, once we get back in business. We got a lot of territory to cover. We got about a 100 kilometer test area that we want. Now, I do got another colony I'm gonna show you here today. And it looks like they got some babies, but again, they're at the end of my zoom. But um, we can still extrapolate quite a bit of it. So I'm not really seeing, and I don't really see, there wasn't a lot of babies on the back of the island. That's where this picture is taken from. And so I'm not surprised that I don't see any babies because they'll stand out in the different colors, right? There is a lot of birds still on their nest. I don't know if they laid more eggs in the hopes that they would. But the, uh, we got a 4% survival rate of the babies. And these pictures I took yesterday, we got pictures from the day. We're going to jump to pretty quick here. And this was just uh, desperation. So I'm a very, again, we're at the end of our zoom and we have to zoom in to make up for it. So we're not really seeing, as to Camerons. So this is another colony that's here all year long. And we'll get better pictures in this coming up. But there was a bunch of birds here. I wanted to see if there was any baby or chicklets because uh, they're getting pretty big now but they still can fly right and I, I can't tell with that pictures that I took but then I uh, moved over to the other side and got some better not much better but see this could be young babies right there there could be 40 50 60 young babies right there there's around 2,000 seagulls here but I can't get a the zoom I'm using, I need a, uh, I need to, which reminds me, I got to buy, I got to order in tomorrow um, a reducer for 
my micro four thirds lenses so I can operate it with the new camera that I've been using since last year. And I'll be able to get a perfect shot. So I think that there is a bunch of babies. I think almost all of these are babies. Well, I'm hoping they are, right? Because you notice over here, they're, they're, they're adult seagulls, right? But that, that group right here, that looks like babies to me. And that's what you would expect to see them do. We're not seeing any wings, right? Like, we're not seeing the feathers, rather. So I got high hopes, that's what it is. Let's keep rolling through this, because I got too many to take my time on. Oh, let's get the last two pictures, see if we got something. Yeah, because you can't tell, but I, I think that's all babies. Now, the birds that are living here are living on the sewage. There's a constant upwell of sewage right to the surface. It's visible, too. And you'll see all the birds out there feeding there. And I think that's what they're being raised on is sewage. This is the last picture of this set. That looks remarkably a lot like 40, 50, or even more babies. I got, I got my fingers crossed. We got to get clean footage. We'll get that. I'll head there immediately when we get the truck back up and running. And this could be babies on the other side, too. And that's about the size they should be. So we're on the complete other size. But as you can see, there's such a long distance. It's really difficult to say. But I, I suspect this is all babies right here. Two, there's around 1,500 or 2,000 seagulls. There's no predators. It's easy for a predator like a dog or even a cat or anything else to get out there. This is actually a bird sanctuary, by the way, we're looking at. And these look remarkably a lot like babies, too. So that would be... Um, see, the other two colonies, uh, as far as we can tell, they're surviving on the fish plants, what they're dumping into the ocean. The seagulls are, there's thousands, we show videos and uh, pictures of that. There's thousands of them feeding at the fish plant, but you don't see any gulls feeding in the ocean. So I, I do believe that's babies. I got me, I'm really hopeful that that is babies. And we'll find out over the next week whether I'm right or not. I think I'm right. And that's pretty good news. But the other two colonies, the northern... Um, the southern colony had no babies that I can find. The northern colony only had a 4% survival rate. Here it looks like you might have a 10% survival rate. That's kind of a better picture there. Yeah, and so I'm pretty sure this is the babies because they're pretty, they're supposed to be pretty big now, and it's just the way they're hanging out with each other. They're very, they're very. That's what babies do. They get, they kind of huddle together in groups, like very tight knit. Where seagulls, because uh, uh, they're different species of seagulls, I'm pretty sure that's babies. Anyway, that's the interior. And so I'm, I'm focusing on these little groups because you can see the moms and pops up right there. And then see the spots right there? And this one here, they're, they're chicklets as far as I can tell. And all of these are chicklets. But that only works out to a 10% survival rate. And there's nothing on the shoreline. You don't see any birds pecking. There's nothing, there's no mussels, there's no snails, there's no clams, there's no uh, sea urchins, there's, there's no species, there's no algaes or nothing there, right? But that, that shot there is definitely looking, I'm almost 100% sure that's babies. So I was really excited when he's got that today and I said, I'll show that tonight. Because something good is something good for a change, right? Good news is pretty hard to come by 
in the research. And just what you would expect is a great spot for a very protected area from, it's not like we're up on the mountains where they can't get down to the water. These are right at the water edge, see? That's all a sanctuary for birds to do all year long, basically. And there's a few ducks, and there's quite a few residential ducks here. Um, again, there's, n there's no birds feeding in the ocean. So when you see, like that one here is a baby. Now I go to the other side and uh, I'm not sure how many pictures, but you know, let's try this. So that's all babies, look at that. That's all babies, man. That is so awesome. Let me get my head out of the way, because that's all babies for sure, folks. Look at that. It's just wonderful, eh? I mean, it's not enough to to um, to keep the colony at the numbers. But still, now these are all sewage babies. They're all surviving by the, the parents eating the sewage, the constant upwelling of the sewage, four or 500 feet on the other side of this. That's where they're getting their food. I was really, I was, re I don't care. I was really happy to see it anyway. So that's definitely, now I did find some dead carcasses when I f at the first spot I was to, but I got, I seen all the birds. So this is another, ain't, no, I'm not quite at the other spot yet. This is a little area where they're nesting too. I didn't see any babies here, I don't think. Now I could have walked out on this spot, but of course, uh, this is a sanctuary. You don't want to be doing that. They, they already got. They're in a. They're in a community, so there's gonna be. Um, go back for a second. Oh yeah. So now I'm moved. Quite a distance, and I was trying to get a glimpse over there. There's a few ducks, but I can't really get a glimpse over there. But I would imagine we're seeing the same thing. So we're probably up to a twenty percent survival rate of what I can see and can't see. That's all babies in there too. Look at that. Yeah, it's not very clean footage, but uh, we'll get better. I'm really impressed with it anyway. I'm pretty, uh, pretty excited that we found some more babies survived. And uh, so over here, I found a few ducks. This is a little reserve. I'll show you the name of it in a second. A little nature reserve. There's not many species here, but they were swimming away from me right away. They're, they're basically residential ducks or mallards. But um, that, let me see, I got a picture of that, yeah. it's called uh, Shearstown Estuary. And you can see uh, waterfowls, songbirds, other bird species, wildlife, plant species, and Atlantic salmon, good luck in finding that, brown brook trouts, capelin, good luck in finding that. American eel, the stickleback, the blue mussels, you got zero hopes of finding that, or the muskrat, or the sea otter. The snowshoe here, probably zero possibility of seeing one of them. Maybe a red fox, not a moose, though, they're almost exterminated, and the minks. The minks should have, should have been out there eating all the babies, see? Eh? Uh, other bird species? Uh, I only found a couple of species. This was a 
sandpaper. I got some better shots, hang on. I never see no baby ducks though, which is interesting. No baby ducks. I got some more pictures of that sandpiper. We should see like one and two and 300 sandpipers at a time. I didn't see any baby ducks. There you go, we got this other angle of them. Oh, he's so pretty, look at that guy. Wow. Beautiful. And you should see at least 100 of them, or even 50, for goodness sakes. But you're very rare to even see one. And you should see thousands of the Arctic terns. They should be up doing beautiful magic in the sky in unison, right? Let me see if we got a perfect shot. I don't know if we got a perfect shot or not. Try that again, Dana. Stop fooling around. I was just trying to get the mouse from showing, but you can't when you're doing this. And I never seen him feeding, and that's nothing but sludge over right there. That's really so. Whatever that is in the water is disgusting. This place is. This is an estuary, but it's surrounded by houses. Almost on all sides. He almost looks like he's looking at me like, hey, these guys were bathing, eh? These must be, um, they were having a party, these guys. They made a lot of uh, mess there. And there was another little, uh, somebody, I was talking to somebody there and they were telling me there was another little spot was just up the road from this place. So I'll be checking these out regularly. Uh, so salt waters, the ocean where, the, where I showed you the other pictures is not very far from right there. It was in that direction, I should say. There were some more ducks were swimming away, but I didn't get a good shot. Uh, when I, it was too late. Uh, so then was another spot, Goose Pond Echo Trail. Dedicated to the memories of Wallace E. Somerton. And uh, that's a, a, now I, I was over right here where the mouse is too. It's about a 15 minute walk to go around this. And so, that's too far for me right now. I'm not healthy enough to get to do something like that. I've never seen a single bird in the pond, though. This is a pretty shallow pond, so you see rocks up there. And you see these white lilies. I never heard no frogs, never seen no frogs. Uh, there was some dragonflies. I got some pictures. Uh, a couple came out really good. We'll show you them in a second. That'll be the end of those pictures. Uh, I was, this is my first trip up to this spot, so I'm learning, right? And so the next time I'll investigate a lot more. Uh, it didn't go the way I wanted. Let's try this. But anyway, there's no birds in the ponds, so that's lilies you're seeing out there. I had my hopes up for a second, but it turns out that that's lilies. It's a beautiful little spot. And then lots of spots to sit down and hang out. There's barely anybody here. And so there was a blue dragonfly. I think this is the one. Yeah, it came out pretty good. But I never had my small lens with me. I only had the, the beak lens. And I wasn't smart enough to walk back and take the picture. I tried to take a picture from up close. But I had the zoom lens on. That's the wrong lens, right? Still came out pretty good, though. 
And I seen probably 20 of them, which was really encouraging. And I actually got some here in my garden of these guys. That which really surprised me, actually. I pretty well left my garden uncut most of the year. I, I finally cut it uh, last night. I left a bunch of big patches anyway for them to hang out until I couldn't do I don't need a perfect garden or anything there, but it's uh and then we seen this guy. And I got one picture or two pictures of him. The first picture came out almost perfect, eh? Wow. So there's a couple of different species. I think I've seen three there. I only got uh, two species, though. I'll guarantee you, well, that's the last picture, I think. Yeah, that is the last picture. That's the last picture. And um, I'll probably do the same thing tomorrow. We're at 12 o'clock. We'll pick this up tomorrow night because that's an important story. I only got a couple of stories left, so we'll pick up from there. We'll pick up from there. Okay. So frustrating not having the boat in the water. My God, not having the truck. I'm literally tortured for the last week. But we'll get it, we'll have it somewhere in the next couple of days and that'll be the end of it. It'll be back up and running. I ordered in a code reader for electronics for the motor, outboard motor and the truck and and the quad and uh and uh, the kicker and stuff like that, so I can read the codes on all of them last night, which I, sh I should have done that obviously a while back. But. Uh, we'll have that on Sunday, hopefully. Because I, I, I kind of got to do everything myself. The, the mechanics are just going to rob you, just rob you. Literally just rob you, right? They wanted uh, $957 to do the, the drive shaft, the labor and the part, plus taxes. I was like, you, you guys are insane. Okay, so let's close the pole down. Let's close the pole down. Let me get this out of the way so it's easier for me tomorrow night. Pretty disappointed in Switzerland, I tell you what. Idiots. That's what you get. And the nuclear industry is ins they're actually insane. Each generation is more dangerous. So we got 48 votes in Switzerland making a lethal mistake by removing the Fukushima radioactive food band. We almost got 100%. And we thank everybody that participated. We got 39 thumbs up. That's so awesome. Thank you, everybody. I know there's nothing in the big scope of things. But uh, it's awesome. So anybody wants to order uh, Calm Down Charlie t-shirts, James Lucid got his. He says it came out almost perfect. That's our best seller is the Calm Down Charlie t-shirts. And let me show you one of them. You can order them at my website. Links are in the bottom of the descriptions. 
Yoda, Yoshida, Machida, Tokyo Brawl, Chicago Division, a.k.a. Calm Down Charlie. He's been stalking me for over 10 years. He's some of his famous one-liners, because when you, you'll call in under different numbers and you'll scream, Yo, Skama! You filthy lawyer! You sick blaster! And... That's the front of it, and on the back of it, we got that picture, the, uh, the infamous picture of the media pretending they're in Reactor 4. That's such a great conversation piece. And uh, for $26 Canadian, that's a so far good deal. Get your Calm Down Charlie t-shirts. And we have, uh, it comes in multiple colors, you can get the pink, and for the children, you can get the blue for yourself, and the green, the black. It comes in just about all sizes. You can, you can get it all the way, man. So you can, you can use it, your ladies, you can use it as a dress. Get five times larger, and you can use it as an actual dress. You know, calm down, Charlie. Uh, and you can also get Calm Down Charlie uh, t-shirts uh, or long sleeve shirts. And we also got the Equals MC Square nuclear power jackets or disease factories. Mugs, we got I uh, Love Nuclear, 93 million miles away. Nuclear power plant disease factory. Save the children, ban nuclear power. Oh yeah, save the insects, save the whales. Ban nuclear power. Atoms for degenerate. And one of my favorite shirts is the nuclear scumbag show with Dana Durnford. <laughs> Excellent. All righty. Uh, there you go. Uh, James is telling you he's not lying he's saying it looks just like it does on the screen really clean looks really good and folks when you wash them turn them inside out so they don't fade over time and so thank you everybody hugs for everybody have a great night have a great day tomorrow we'll see everybody tomorrow night At the same time, you have tons of nuclear propaganda to get through. We gotta challenge Switzerland. We gotta wake Switzerland up. The media is not reporting that they're about to be poisoned at every supermarket and corner store and cafeteria. It's time to fight back against evil nuclear. Nuclear is evil. Have a great night. A great day tomorrow. Make it this far. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hugs for everybody. Take care, folks. Great night, folks. See everybody tomorrow night. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up.